Hey, beautiful good afternoon to you. Uh, this is yours truly, uh, Mr. Panuka from Panuka Farm, right here uh, in Zambia. Okay, um, it's it's quite a cocktail of uh, you know weather pattern today. Uh, a bit chilly, windy, bit of sun, uh, but we're getting by. Um, so we are now four years as uh, Panuka Farm. Uh, it's actually our fourth you know anniversary. Uh, we started this little farm, five hectares, um, four years ago. Uh, in 2017 and so yeah celebrating our four years uh but this four years has not been the easiest um so what we'll do today is just to share some insights uh with you on um our journey the last four years what have we actually learned uh if you go to our you know facebook page you actually know that um we wrote quite a very detailed uh, you know article about um 10 points that we actually brought out as key lessons that we've picked up in the last uh, four years of our uh, farming. So you actually find the link to that uh, Facebook post uh, where we have that long detailed you know, article about those 10 you know, lessons that we've picked up. Um, but um, in this video, we'll actually try and just share with you a few of those uh, points. Um, so let's get going. The first point is that um, when you're actually starting you know, a farm, uh, you always need what we call best infrastructure. So basically, it's, it's the likes of land, which is one of the factors of production. Um, you also need perhaps to have that, you know, farm, you know, fenced. You need water. Um, you know, very, very critical, you know, uh, kind of infrastructure or assets uh, to make your, your farming uh, a lot easier. Okay, so that's what we call best infrastructure. And um, I think you need to make sure that you actually have adequate best infrastructure because that is what can support uh, your enterprise, um, even aspects related to, you know, uh, scaling up. Uh, that would only be possible if um, you've got adequate, you know, uh, best infrastructure. So it's very, very critical that uh, you introspect on what kind of uh, best infrastructure you absolutely need, uh, you know, for you to get going. Um, so that along the way, when you need to expand, you know, scale up, uh, your infrastructure is not uh, found, you know, wanting, okay? Uh, kind of windy. Um, yeah, I need to strap this, otherwise uh, uh, my heart will actually fly away. <laughs> so one point of caution with uh, best infrastructure is that uh, you need to avoid what we call white elephants. So basically this is infrastructure that uh, you are going to acquire at a huge cost but yet it's actually not going to be used productively in your uh, farming. You may have just five hectares like, uh, you know, Panuka Farm 1. Um, so you have to question yourself whether uh, a 100 horsepower tractor uh, is actually critical uh, when you're just starting. So uh, make sure that uh, you avoid the copy, you know, and paste where you actually see your neighbor uh, putting up, uh, you, know, um, you know, fish ponds. Uh, you also jump in, yet you actually have no idea uh, how you're actually going to use uh, those fish ponds, you know, productively. Uh, so make sure, um, you know, you introspect uh, on exactly what kind of infrastructure, um, you know, assets that you actually need to acquire from the way it go uh, to assist with your uh, farming journey. So that's one point of caution, I think, with, uh, you know, best infrastructure. Uh, but very, very critical for you to introspect uh, and make sure that... Uh, you get best infrastructure that is adequate for what uh, you, you want to do um, on your farm, okay? So, but again, that is quite contextual, given that um, if you're going to do, you know, uh, peak, you know, production, um, obviously you've got, you know, peak pens and things like that. Uh, if you're doing feed lotting, um, again, the kind of infrastructure that you actually need is different, okay? Um, so the point is that uh, think through exactly what you want to do. Because sometimes we've not thought through uh, the issues that you keep, you know, jumping from one venture to the next. Uh, you keep on, you know, building infrastructure, leaving it. You've got greenhouses. You thought you were actually going into horticulture. And then next, you know, feedlotting becomes a lot more appealing. You jump again. You've got to build some more infrastructure. If you keep jumping from one venture to the next, uh, you end up, you know, building, you know, uh, redundant infrastructure that we call white elephants. Because you actually keep changing, you know, from one venture to the next. Uh, but you actually find that um, when you started, you know, this other venture, you needed to build uh, infrastructure that suits that kind of venture. And then you move on to the next, um, you know, so you, you keep on spreading your resources thinly uh, across, you know, infrastructure that is actually not going to be useful uh, in your, you know, core production. So serious point of caution. 
there's quite a number of risks that actually do um, affect you know farming uh, from the way it go especially if you're a startup um, but the QQC that we've actually you know talked about you know over and again um, which is basically the quality quantity and the consistency I think you need to stay alive to you know some of the issues that would actually affect your ability to produce a quality crop um, and also meeting the right quantities that are actually required by off-takers um, and also things that actually do impede on your ability to uh, farm consistently. Uh, so things like doing too many you know, things on the farm, too many products, uh, might actually be a huge risk for you to stay you know, consistently uh, in your uh, production. So very, very critical. Now, when it comes to you know, risks, um, I think one other risk that you actually need to take into account is actually labor risk. Um, and obviously within the labor risk, there's a tendency for most of the farm owners to actually allege that um, the farm is actually not doing well because of the staff uh, who are not putting you know, all their effort into the farm. But you actually forget that um, you, uh, the farm owner, you're actually the number one you know, employee. So you need to make sure that uh, you know, you're not you know, the source uh, of the biggest risk you know, where you're actually not applying yourself. Um, you know, things like phoning uh you know to the farm to try and check how the farm is doing um uh you only come perhaps you know once per two weeks and things like that um surely how do you expect the you know the workers to take you seriously um so i think those are critical critical issues um for you to know that you are the number one uh employee for your farm uh and so it's actually very important that uh, you apply yourself quite fully uh if you expect the farm to do very well okay so that uh, I think in our view has actually been one of the things that we've observed that um, uh, I think leadership is actually needed in managing some of these, uh, you know, small holding farms and perhaps even commercial ones. One other lesson is that, um, you know, with farming, um, one plus one is not always equal to two. Okay. Sometimes you actually get, you know, negative um, or quite some very, you know, exponential uh, returns. Um, I think there's always this view by, you know, newbies that sometimes, you know, especially those that, uh, you know, get some money, uh, either you've just retired with a huge pension and then you think, okay, I'm going to invest in 10,000 layers. Um, I'll start with, say, 20, you know, fish ponds. Uh, I'll start with 20 greenhouses or indeed 50 hectares of open field, you know, farming. Yet, you probably have actually never even kept, you know, two chickens and then you want to do, you know, 10,000, you know, layers, you know your money can actually easily, you know, drown. Um, with farming, I think you need to take your time, um, lend the trade, because there's quite a number of risks, um, you know, that come with almost every venture, by the way. Um, and again, that's another point of caution that um, regardless of what venture you're actually going to run to, even if you run from pigs to, you know, crop and things like that, each of these ventures actually has its own, you know, um, you know risks. So the issue is that, um, be a lot more humble. Take your time, lend the trade uh, before you actually, you know, have your money uh, drown. So once you've actually picked up a bit of uh, confidence, uh, you know the markets, you know how to grow the crops, you know how to keep your pigs, you know how to keep your animals if you're doing feedlotting or things like that. Uh, then at that point, I think it's good for you to scale up because now you have confidence. Uh, you can actually manage the venture. You understand the risks and things like that. Okay. Uh, so... Avoid that expectation of, uh, you know, one plus one always equal to two, um, especially where, when you're actually a newbie, okay? That's a very, very serious, uh, you know, point of uh, uh, caution. So one other, you know, lesson that we've actually picked up in our last four years of uh, farming is that um, too many experiments um, can actually be quite costly. Um, and I think over time, what we've actually realized is that uh, if you're actually going to invest in something, make sure that... Uh, you go for a tried and tested solution. Be it, you know, inputs, make sure that you actually go for tried and tested uh, inputs. Um, as opposed to doing too many, you know, experiments, you're always a guinea pig. Um, you're the dumping ground, you know, for speculative, you know, uh, inputs. Um, even in terms of best infrastructure that we actually talked about, um, whether you're actually going to buy, say, a tractor, you need to make sure that uh, it's a tried and tested, you know, uh, solution. Um, so that once you've actually, you know, uh, spent on um, your inputs or indeed your um, assets, um, you're on to the next, you know, uh, you know, asset. Instead of, you know, one, two years, it actually breaks down. Um, 
you actually remember i think uh, those that have actually read our you know facebook you know page the experiments that we actually started in terms of uh, greenhouse infrastructure we started with diy good learning point uh, but i think along the way we actually realized that um, uh, we couldn't continue uh, experimenting given that even our experiment you know failed twice you know the DIR greenhouse collapsed, you know, inwards and things like that. And at some point, we actually realized, well, we're actually here to farm and not to keep doing, you know, our experiments. Otherwise, we keep drowning, you know, our resources. And so that's how we actually, you know, went for a tried and tested, um, you know, off-the-shelf uh, solution on uh, greenhouse. And uh, this is, you know, uh, part of, um, you know, the infrastructure that we got. And, you know, it's been very, very good uh, infrastructure uh, that seems to be delivering the goods now. OK, so avoid too many um, experiments uh, on infrastructure and inputs. Uh, make sure that you actually do your research, um, you know, on all these um, so that uh, you avoid issues of reworks. One other issue is that um, there's quite a lot of complaints about, um, you know, lack of money uh, for you know, agribusiness and things like that. Um, but I think even in Zambia now, uh, if you actually take stock of most of the um, potential sources of, um, you know, funds, I think there's quite a bit that's around in terms of grants, um, you know, even the ones that are called matching grants and things like that. But the issue is that this kind of money is only available to those that have been, you know, doing something. Uh, you have some baselines and things like that and not necessarily to startups. So this is a point of caution for those that uh, would buy land and then year in out, uh, all you do is just go and, uh, you know, slash your grass and things like that. Uh, you're not starting. You're always afraid. Um, just go to view your land every day or every week, you know. So you need to start something because the kind of money that is actually around in the business is only available to those that are doing something and um, they have actually something to show um, because most of it is actually about scaling up. So you don't scale up from zero. You actually scale up from something. And um, that's why the first thing that uh, most of these, uh, you know, sources of money would do is to ascertain the baseline so that they actually see that if they injected some money in you, um, you actually move from a certain point to uh, a higher level. Okay, so don't be afraid of starting, start something now. Um, abash, you know, this uh, tendency of going to the farm every week just to go and slash and greet neighbors and things like that. Um, start something today. Okay, don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's actually normal. We've actually made a lot of mistakes ourselves, I think, in the last, uh, you know, uh, four years. But it's all about action research. When you actually fail, learn, and then implement, fix that, and then move on. Okay? So, go and start something today. <laughs> you know, avoid this issue of uh, continuously, you know, postponing the idea of starting. Coupled with the other, you know, uh, aspect that we talked about and the fact that... Um, um, there is money uh, for, for scale-up. Um, one other issue is that um, even if you've actually been you know, farming for some time, um, it's very, very critical uh, for you to have you know, things like business plans, having your financials ready. Um, it doesn't mean that uh, when you talk about financials, it means you've got to have a certain you know, turnover. Um, though obviously that matters, but I think what is very, very critical is the fact that um, you are able to account for you know, exactly what's been going on in your business. Um, and you're actually able to show uh, that and also having, you know, um, a good business plan uh, for uh, what you actually intend to do. Uh, that actually, I think, is uh, very, very critical. So instead, I mean, one of the aspects of actually being investor ready uh, is this same aspect of having things like business plans, um, having your enterprise, you know, formally registered uh, in Zambia. You're talking about PACRA. Um, you know, so very, very critical, you know, aspects uh, that actually speak to being investor ready. Uh, so make sure that uh, you have your house uh, in order, um, you know, because when that opportunity comes, uh, it probably might be a lot more difficult for you to begin to arrange, you know, things, um, you know, on the go. OK, so be ready. Um, I think anytime so that should an opportunity arise, you have your business plan, you know, your enterprise is registered and you can actually tick, you know, a number of boxes that, uh, you know, are required by some of these potential, uh, you know, funders. So one other point is that um, farming by its nature is not as easy as sometimes social media uh, makes it, you know, appear uh, where you see 10,000 cabbages, um, you know, and all manner of produce. Um, I think it's quite a complex, you know, uh, trade. Uh, it takes quite a while, you know, for you to actually uh, get to understand exactly how 
you know it plays out um so you know you need to make sure that you actually approach it with um you know the required um you know level of uh, expertise uh and also seriousness uh, otherwise um it might actually end up in a disaster um I think one of the issues that we've actually observed is that when other people, you know, fail in other, you know, ventures, you've been doing uh, second-hand clothes, you know, you've been running a, you know, a saloon or something like that, and uh, when you've actually failed there, uh, you know, you say, perhaps let me just turn to farming, uh, it might actually be a lot easier. And fortunately, uh, it's just like any other business that, uh, you know, is befallen with um, quite a number of risks. And um, if the reason why your other business failed is because of lack of seriousness, um, you're not you know managing your finances very well and things like that that's farming it also just requires the same level of uh, uh seriousness okay so take note of some of these tidbits otherwise um you just have a series of uh you know failure in you know your businesses because farming uh, is actually business now one other issue that is actually worth uh, mentioning is um the aspect of financing and and how being trusted or credit worth can actually be a very good form of collateral for you for your business um you know in in farming as it were uh, much as you would actually have some very good you know uh, credit facilities from banks and, and the like um there comes a time at some point that things happen during say the weekend uh when you can't actually you know um exercise you know the the agreement that you have with the bank say an overdraft you know for you to access some funds uh, so at that point you actually realize that uh, if you've got you know good friends um, you know um, and a few other entities that would actually give you money at short notice but has a human face <laughs> and we talk about human face there's a you know the kind of money that would actually um, you know uh, leave you in debt but we're talking about very flexible uh, money you know cost of capital is very uh, manageable sometimes it's actually zero um, so I think you need those kind of um, you know facilities when you're actually managing a you know a farm uh, because sometimes you don't have uh, you know fertilizer uh, a pump has just given up and you actually need to call a friend uh, at short notice to be act actually able to give you um, some some money okay so that kind of money unfortunately is only possible if uh, you are trusted um, credit worthy and and so it's actually very very important that uh, you are you know a trusted person if you're actually going to manage uh, a farm or indeed any other enterprise um, because you always be in need of uh, that you know quick money that has a human face um, but if you don't have that trust along the way you know no one would actually be willing to lend you any money uh, because of your character so you need to invest a lot uh, in your character because that's one of your biggest you know forms of uh, uh, collateral in accessing you know any form uh, of uh, very quick um, you know kind of uh, you know facilities so another point um, that I think is our last point um, uh, in, in this uh, you know video has to do with um, an issue called over trading um, you can actually google what that is but basically over trading is where you know you carry on business that's beyond um, what your enterprise can actually you know accommodate um, so if you're actually farming, you may actually, you know, begin to receive orders, you know, over time uh, in an incremental manner. But then the issue is that at some point, um, the orders might actually be beyond your capacity. But sometimes um, when you have no integrity or, or sometimes not even just um, an issue of integrity, but being too ambitious, uh, you take on a lot of some of these, um, you know, um, opportunities. Uh, but then you finance them, say, with debt um, and things like that. Um, and then... Uh, your business is actually unable to meet, uh, you know, the financing costs of uh, such a rapid, you know, um, expansion. So I think there's need for modesty uh, in your growth. Um, and I think we've actually tried ourselves to be a bit more, you know, modest. Um, sometimes a lot of, uh, you know, other, you know, off-takers will actually come our way. But uh, I think we actually indicate that we can't manage, you know, uh, at that moment. But I think we look... You know into the future to begin to invest in terms of infrastructure so that um, uh, when opportunities come along the way we are actually able to uh, you know meet them um, you know fully so it actually speaks to your business integrity um, accepting opportunities that are within your capacity um, but obviously there's room for growth um, so you have to do that in an incremental uh, manner but i think avoid the issue of uh, you know over trading where you grow too quickly uh, you finance you know your growth
scraps due to you know uh, debt and things like that you know at some point uh, we've actually seen some farms being um, you know repossessed uh, sometimes sexual growth um, that is too quickly supported by debt and things like that so yeah something you know worth uh, taking note of so that's that's basically uh, the 10 you know uh, aspects that we've actually picked up um, in the last you know four years of our farming journey um, I think we have a few more uh, points that probably we didn't cover I think in this video um, but we will append um, you know our Facebook link to that uh, detailed article uh, about our four-year uh, journey and I uh, hope uh, that will be able to minister to you and help you uh, in your uh, farming uh, journey so thank you so much and um, thank you so much also for uh, hanging around uh, on Panuka Farm uh, YouTube channel uh, we hope to uh, bring you a lot more uh, you know content with a lot more juice from Mr. Panuka bye bye